Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to be looking at some of the different R2s of the Ultra Great Swords to find out which one is the best, at least in my opinion. Now, when it comes to two-handing at least, you do have three different variations. You have one that is a thrust, you have one that is a vertical smack on the ground, like so, and then you have the version that specifically the Greatsword has, which is a horizontal swipe. And the thing is, is that all of these are good for different things, which is really cool, but the, the winner, in my opinion, probably goes to the gugs now the reason why is because this attack already was really good before it got the speed buff and the speed buff was a lot it, it wasn't just by say one frame which is say the buff that some daggers got it, it was huge i don't know the exact amount but it, it's almost like twice as fast it feels like at least um but Super hard hitting R2. It is a phenomenal roll catch. That was its entire purpose uh, before the the patch that made it so much faster. Even though it was as slow as it was beforehand, it did hit very hard, and it was essentially what you were conditioning your opponent to get hit by. So Ultra Great Swords in their current state essentially are trying to land those crouch attacks as you are sort of like neutral something. You can make them harder to see coming than the rest of your attacks, but you're trying to condition your opponent to be able to get hit by the R2. And the Gugs is a very realistic one to hit due to its very large hitbox, its very wide sweep, as well as it just being the longest and the hardest hitting, generally speaking, of all the Ultra Great Swords. Now, when it comes to the next category, which is going to be the Poke R2s, which say ones like the Zwei Hander or the Munithral Great Sword, which we're using right now, has. Um, this one is also going to be quite good, but I don't think it's as overtuned as the Gugs version. I think you could make an argument, especially since it now combos with Storm Stomp, um, that the R2 of Gugs is overtuned. But the one that the, the 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 ones that get the poke, I think, are actually in a fantastic spot because it's it's just the right speed for it to be extremely reactable. Like it's it's still a slow attack, but it's it's timing, especially considering that it's interval timing, is going to complement perfectly getting in on your opponent, wiggling around like you're gonna go for a crouch a crouch attack, and then you have to unlock generally and charge that R2 and release it for the moment that you think that they're going to panic roll. Now, technically, that's the case with all of the different R2s, technically, but because it is a uh, it is a thrusting attack, you are going to have more active frames out in front of a single direction. So assuming that you are good at unlocking and essentially no-scoping, if you will, around your character to hit your opponent, you are going to have, in that scenario, an easier time landing the roll catch. The roll catch just in general is easier with the Gugs, since the horizontal swing does the majority of the heavy lifting. Um, but once you are familiar with aiming in whatever direction, you will find that maybe, maybe despite it not being quite as good, that the thrust feels better. At least in my opinion, it's a lot more satisfying to land. I, I do love landings Y-Hander R2s. Um, now, for the final type, you pretty much didn't make much of any use case for it at all before the patch, which is the vertical swing. But now, after having such a large increase to the speed at which the uh, vertical swing comes out, there actually is a very good reason to use it. I mean, it's pretty much almost the speed of the overhead swings of, say, certain great swords like the Mariah's or the one-handed overhand. Like, it is really fast. Um, and it also has crazy fast hyper armor as well, but that's the case with all of these. But anyway, what's, what's interesting about it is that it is the only one that is directly a jump counter. So one of the most prominent weaknesses of the majority of an Ultra Great Swords moveset is getting countered by a jump attack. 
and that is something that is significantly more dangerous for your opponent to go for if you're using, say, the, the Royal Greatsword, like what I'm using right now, the one that Blyde uses. Um, this one is an example of one that has that overhead swing. So if you find that someone is jumping a little bit too much and you want to punish them for it, it is much easier to land this R2 in comparison to that running R2. The running R2 was essentially your only answer for that other than swapping off beforehand or just trying to play as best you can around a jump attacking opponent. Um, but yeah, the, the vertical swing just craps all over that play style so definitely a good tool to keep around even if it's not quite as good at least in my experience at the whole roll catching bit now for the last bit here i'm going to take a gander at where the ultra great swords in general sit with the entire meta because if you guys remember all the way back from day one ultra great swords were some of the most meta weapons in the entire game it was a combination of how much faster their crouch poke used to be as well as it being one of the only things that would very consistently break full bull goats amounts of poise so as of right now, for a long time, I have held the belief that they should have nerfed the Crouch Poke in a different way, other than lowering its speed. Um, because I do think that every weapon in the game does need a fast option, um, which is part of the reason why Crouch Poke for the... Well, not Crouch Poke, but just the Crouch Attacks of the Colossal Weapons makes them significantly better now. That attack is two frames faster than it used to be. But... The amount of buffs to compensate for what they did to the Crouch Poke, which is still usable, just not, not nowhere near as good, um, does allow for you to pretty much make use of the entire moveset. And when you consider that Colossal Weapons and Colossal Swords are not able to tank each other, which is something that was completely mis missing from, say, like, Great Swords and similar sized uh, weapons in Patch 1.10, um, it makes it to where an Ultra Great Sword is a fantastic thing to just keep on any build because if your opponent is someone that over relies on Hyper Armor for their gameplay, if you just play good fundamentals with a Colossal Sword yourself, then you're going to find a ton of success against those type of players. As well as it just being super strong against people that are running just anything else. You do have to play more of a passive game in that type of situation, but it is still definitely doable. But with that being said, I think I've said just about everything that I want to. Uh, I apologize for the short videos. I've been having a difficult time finding the time to make videos as of recent, so I have some huge projects in the work, so please stick with me while I am getting those ready. Have a good day, everyone. Peace.